Good morning. Welcome back to the Junius Malt B channel. Glad you could join us for today's extemporaneous and unscripted, fast-paced move through the headlines. Uh, join us for the discussion down below in the comments after the video, or pause and throw a comment during the middle of the video. But uh, a lot of material, a lot of information to go over today, so bear with us as we chip away at it. As you can see by the title, that this is a strengthening case for gold going into the next several months, even years. Uh, the bull market for gold continues to look better, continues to build. And you'll see by hopefully some of these headlines, uh, it pointing to that. As you can see by the slide up there currently, gold did slip today 1% as stocks and dollar recover some losses. You got gold down just a hair and silver uh, went down below $15 for the, it's sitting at $14.99. Getting into the headlines, European economy, Eurozone is flying on one engine. This is an interesting headline here stating the Eurozone economy is flying on one engine according to the chief European economist at ratings agency Standard & Poor's which trimmed its growth and in inflation forecasts for the Eurozone. The Eurozone has been in and out of trouble for the last several years ever since the financial crisis and it seems like right now that the uh, Eurozone, European Union is just really having a hard time. IMF says insurers pose risks to the global economy. Low interest rates may have induced firms to take on more risk, IMF says. So this is setting up a situation similar to that pre-2008 crisis. Got a lot of risk out there, you got low interest rates, and you have firms taking on more risk with low interest and easy access to easy money. And uh, well, it's, it's building a bubble. It's inflating a bubble. Interesting slide showing the relative size of financial institutions in key countries, insurers, banks, other financial institutions, and pension funds. Global regulators are not paying enough attention to the risks of the global economy from the insurance sector, the International Monetary Fund warned Monday. The contribution of the insurance sector, particularly of life insurers, to systemic risk has increased and play an important role in the financial turmoil spreading from one region to another, the IMF said. Low interest rates may have induced firms to take on more risk, the IMF said, and the asset composition of firms may have become more similar, increasing exposure to common shocks and fire sales, the international agency said. Insurance companies hold $24 trillion in assets or about 12% of global financial assets, of which life insurance accounts for 85%, the IMF said. Moving along, 10-year Treasury yield slips to five-week low. As many of you are aware, the, 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 the head wizard, the high wizard of banking spoke the other day to the masses, uh, Janet Yellen, and uh, the yield on the 10-year U.S. Treasury note fell Monday to its lowest level in more than a month as investors continue to buy government bonds in the wake of last week's strong employment data and Federal Reserve Chairwoman Janet Yellen's comments, which implied that interest rates will remain lower for longer. So more of the same. Easy money, cheap money, which we just read in the previous slides and story, increases risks borrowing further exposure to another financial crisis. Uh, that view was bolstered last week when Janet Yellen stressed the need for a cautious approach to raising benchmark interest rates, citing risks emanating from slow growing emerging markets. After her comments, expectations for a rate increase this year diminished, with Fed funds futures pointing to a 26% probability of a rate increase in June, according to CME groups Fed Watch tool. Factory orders dive 1.7%. Core capital goods dip 2.5%. Last month revised lower. Factory orders dove 1.7% in February. As reported today by the U.S. Census Bureau, the weakness did not stop with the headline number. January orders were revised lower to 1.2% from 1.6%. Core capital goods plunged a whopping 2.5% and shipments fell 0.7%. Factory orders fell nearly in line with the Bloomberg 
Econoday's consensus reading of negative 1.6%, but economists did not take into account January revisions. Here's a chart looking at factory orders and shipments, manufacturing new orders and shipments. New orders in blue, shipments in red. As you can see, they've been pretty much deteriorating since May of 2014, and then they kind of troughed out there in May of 15. But uh, recent dip dropping right there, you can see shipments, uh, and there's never been a plunge like this outside of a recession, according to the source. Moving along, Gold Lovers bet party isn't over after 17% first quarter surge. Money managers increase net long holdings by 2.1%. CFTC says bullion futures post biggest quarterly gain since 1986. Going for gold, speculators are most bullish in 14 months as investors pile into gold back ETFs. Measurement of metric tons there on the left. Years on the bottom, as you can see, and then contracts on the right there. Uh, pretty incredible. We're seeing speculators really bullish right now going into metals. Now, again, a lot of this is ETF gold. So what does that mean? Paper. Does it exist? I don't know. It definitely has an effect on the price of gold. However, we don't even know if some of that gold is physically represented anywhere. Positive fundamentals. The fundamentals, particularly easy money policies globally, are very positive. So again, you're seeing a theme here, easy money fundamentals, low interest, easy money. Okay. Said Adrian Day, president of Adrian Day Asset Management in Annapolis, Maryland, which oversees $146 million. The dollar seems to have peaked, at least for the short term. And again, whenever there's easy money floating around out there, that's more dollars that are out there competing for a fixed or a finite amount of gold. So when you, the more you flood the market with easy money, easy dollars, then the more those dollars are going to find themselves eventually competing to purchase a, a bar or a coin of gold, and therefore the price of that gold will rise over time. So the more of this easy money, the more of these sustained low interest rates we see for a longer duration of time, we're going to see it further inject wealth into the gold markets. because. There are investors out there that have easy access to gold. They're going to earn some big profits, and they're going to hedge money in gold from other areas of their investing. Eventually, gold, it, it's magnetic. I know it's not, but it is. It attracts the cash. It sucks it in. It's going to draw cash away from some of these accounts, from some of these funds, because they know there are individuals there that know and have seen it react in the past, and a lot of them aren't as stupid as you would think when it comes to economic indicators, history, and, ha and the role of gold in all of this. So as they earn profits, as they build reserves of extra cash, they're going to put some of it away in gold, therefore driving the price of gold up. Gold bull case, surge in government bonds with negative yield. We've talked about this, negative interest rates. Go back and look at some of those videos on negative interest rates. The negative interest rates are going to, again, drive money and drive investors towards gold. On March 31st, 2016, the World Gold Council published a market update, Gold in a World of Negative Interest Rates. The update provides some excellent information on how a significant portion of government bonds are trading with negative yields and present a case for increasing investments in gold. The chart below that is sourced from the same report puts things into perspective. Here you go. Sovereign debt, total outstanding, $29.2 trillion. Yields when adjusted for inflation. When yields are adjusted for inflation, 51% of sovereign debt, U.S. $15 trillion, is trading with negative real yields, and only 16% yields more than 1% in real terms. This is market update. Gold in the world of negative interest rates, March 31st, 2016. Bloomberg and the World Gold Council. Over decades, gold has been the only honest currency and is the only store of value. It is therefore not surprising to see the World Gold Council recommending that investors should double their allocation in gold. In my view, the author of the article, investors in the advanced economy 
should have at least 20% to 25% of the investment portfolio allocation towards gold with the remaining 75% distributed to equities, cash, and investment grade corporate bonds. In conclusion, investors seeking to beat inflation have to increasingly consider investment in risky asset classes. And I expect higher investment in gold instead of sovereign bonds in the coming years. This supports my view that gold remains in a bull market and is likely to provide stellar returns in the next decade. So again, the investors he's talking about are guys that are going to have access to that tap, that easy flow of cash that's flowing through the banks and all these funds and markets and Wall Street, low interest, they have access to low interest. They're moving large sums of money around and as they generate profits with that large sums of money, before the house of cards comes crumbling down and blows away in the wind, these guys are going to start moving some of that money towards gold. And it might happen quickly one day. As we've talked about in the past, these events could unfold without warning, without a YouTube video telling you about it, without a news article. It could just be that quickly, instantaneous. Something gets triggered in the markets and there's a mad rush for metals. When that happens and if that were to happen, it would typically be too late for those of us here out on the periphery of those worlds, those financial worlds. We're going to find out a day late and a dollar short. Most of the supply will probably be gone of those metals and access to them would be very difficult for us as well as uh, getting delivery if you were to even place an online order. So this is the time to pay attention and acquire these metals prior to the mad rush for the fire exit. You want to get out of a building before the alarms start going off and everyone tries to run for the exit because then it just gets congested and you end up stuck in the doorway burning up with everyone else. So you want to exit the emergency situation as early as possible. Hopefully that makes sense. Now, gold, this is where we're going to move back over to Europe. We read just earlier in the video about Europe having some troubles. We've seen how negative interest rates are uh, affecting gold. Now we're going to see an article about gold mint at Europe's heart it says the sub-zero rates are bullying sales. Bullion had the best quarterly performance in three decades. Negative interest rates are doubling gold returns, council says. Europeans grappling with a refugee crisis and negative interest rates are buying gold as a haven investment, according to the Austrian mint's Andrea Lang who expect demand in the region to stay strong in 2016. Interest rates are negative at the moment and people don't see any benefit of keeping their money anywhere. But at the same time, they feel a little bit concerned about the future. Lang, director of marketing and sales, said in an interview in Singapore, they want to invest, they want to have a safe haven for their money, she said Friday. Gold has best quarter in three decades. Prices rose more than in any period since 1986, as you can see there, reflected in this chart. Uh, another headline, gold is the pile of poker chips in the next global crisis. I would recommend you read this entire article if you have the time to do so. It's pretty lengthy and it's by one of the individuals whom I have a, a deal of respect for. His name is Jim Rickards or James Rickards. Let's just read one of the excerpts here. He says that the crisis in 2008 was centered around too big to fail banks. Since 2008, those same banks have grown larger, control a larger percentage of all banking assets in the U.S., and have much larger derivatives books. This makes the risk of collapse and the potential size of the collapse much greater than anything seen since the Great Depression, perhaps longer. Meanwhile, little of the policy support used in 2008 to 2009 has been withdrawn. This means that the risk of collapse is greater and the means to truncate collapses are used up and not available. The only clean balance sheet and source of liquidity left in the world is the International Monetary Fund, which can make an emergency issuance of special drawing rights. China's quid pro quo will be the marginalization of the dollar. This will cause a diminution in confidence which will rapidly cascade into a full-scale crisis of confidence. It's talking about the dollar basically being dramatically affected during the next financial crisis. We've also heard the same thing come from Peter Schiff. 
a couple of key points that I like to, to talk about here in, in this interview and in this statement in particular is that statement about the means to truncate collapse are used up and not available. Well, I think you've heard that before on this channel. I didn't use those specific terms, truncating, uh, collapse, not available. But those firewalls, those safety stops and, and, and levers they pull, all those little switches and gadgets and gizmos they use on the stock market and in the financial world to try to stave off Armageddon back in 08 when everything was going haywire, a lot of that's not there anymore. They've already dropped, look at interest rates. They had to drop them dramatically to, to free up capital and, and make it easy access to capital to encourage more lending and spending back during that crisis. Well, interest rates are as low as they're going to get right now. Okay, without other than, of course, yes, going negative. So we've got, that's already there. They've, they've done quantitative easing one, two, three, and four, just flooding the market with free cash, lots of money. So they'd have to do more of those. Well, that would just lead, that would eventually just lead to hyperinflation. You cannot continue to flood the market with easy printed off money or digits on a screen. So they've, they've done a lot of the measures and pulled a lot of these rabbits out of their hat. They're out of rabbits and they don't have a hat anymore. So the magic's going to dry up. Everyone's going to realize it's just smoke and mirrors and it's a, it's a cheap sideshow in Vegas, magic show. And once that happens and the faith is gone, the dollar collapses, you're going to be left with only very few options to, to save your, your wealth, your assets, your future, your dynasty. So this is the case for gold, ladies and gentlemen. I know it's boring to talk about a lot of mumbo jumbo, a lot of headlines, a lot of stuff to chew up and, and look at. And you hear so many different things coming out of the financial news media uh, trying to paint a picture of hope and prosperity that the future will yield more than the past or the present and that everything looks sunny and rosy going into the future. Well, it's just not the case. People are getting dumber, lazier. Uh, the world's becoming more unstable, more violent, more volatile. And I, I have to admit that there is a, a very big part of me that believes in no way in no way will the future show improvement upon where we are right now. I just uh, call it lost, losing faith in humanity. But take a look around you, see what's happening, um, see what people have as a priority. Look at the the integrity or the lack of integrity, the work ethics that people have today, um, their moral compass, their guide. Look at the everyday actions and interactions and headlines showing how society is behaving and you will see that it's uh, we're on the Titanic we've hit a very large iceberg the ships taking on water and there are life rafts available but they are limited there you go thanks for joining us here on the Junior Small Fee channel punch a comment down below Please like, share, and subscribe. Help grow the community by sharing the channel uh, with friends that are like-minded or not. Uh, but uh, thanks for being here as always, and I enjoy the conversations you guys continue to have here on the channel on a daily basis.